The Norse were often portrayed as brutes who raped and pillaged their gods, as opposed to the rest of Europe, who raped and pillaged for a different god. The fact is that they may not have been as bad as you think. While the rest of Europe was busy hiding in the closet, the Vikings had a slightly different perspective of homosexuality and gender non-conformity. Many Norse legends include mythical beings changing gender and cross-dressing, from Loki the trickster to Odin Lord of Asgard. There are many examples of breaking gender norms. If you were gay or bisexual in Viking communities, they might not kill you, but you still had to do the do and make a baby. If you couldn't do your duty in that respect, you were labelled either fluflugi or flanfluga. Another taboo was being a bottom. And if you don't know what being a bottom is, maybe Google it at home with incognito activated and parental permission. Or just look at me. The last thing a male Viking wanted was to be effeminate. Femphobia was rife in Viking culture. By the decree of the bro code, men found to be in female only areas would henceforth lose their male essence. Men were to hang with men, no homo. Of course, this worked in favour for the lesbian Vikings. Homosexuality was also acceptable if you were doing some good old conquering and needed to release your leftover male essence. We all go grey and gay, or so the Vikings thought. Everyone get aga as they get older. Suggesting that femininity and homosexuality got more acceptable the older you got. This is probably only half the picture. The Christianization of Scandinavia erased large parts of history. What we're left with is the slightly queer, bloodthirsty Vikings. So if you're a Viking and gay, you're okay, as long as you have a beard. <laughs>